call to worship is coming from 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. Starting at verse, the fifth chapter, starting at verse 12. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen? Amen. Amen. So just as we sang that song, gratefulness, we have a lot to be grateful for. Amen? Amen. 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 Just to make it to 2020 is, is grateful enough. Amen? Amen? Amen. But thank God for the leaders of this house. Amen? Thank God for the members of this house. Amen? Thank God for the mothers. Amen? Thank God for the children. Amen. We're grateful that God gave us breath to breathe, to praise Him again. One more time. Amen. 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 The husbands, the fathers, everybody. <laughs> I said all the members. You, you were part of leaders. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So thank God for all of you. Amen. Amen. But we are grateful. So I'm just going to ask this. We're going to do something a little different. Um, usually you listen to somebody pray. But I want you to take this moment right now and just tell God what you're grateful for. Amen? Amen. Even if it's something you expect to happen later. Like, I'm grateful. Sometimes we just got to thank God for what we have. Amen? Thank God for what we have. Be content with what we have so that when you give us something else, we just, God, I thank you for that too. But I'm not sad that I don't have what I don't, what I didn't pray, what I didn't ask you for, but I thank you for what I have right now. Amen? I have my right mind. I have peace of mind. I thank you, God. That I have the ability to raise my hands. That I have the ability to sing. I couldn't sing without coughing the other day. So I thank God. Amen. So whatever you got to give God praise for right now, just take a moment and just go before the Lord for yourself. Amen. Amen. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Hallelujah. Amen. So open your mouths and praise Him and pray and just be thankful, grateful. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. In Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen. 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 Tell your neighbor, find something to be grateful for. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Especially when you're going through. Amen. When you're going through, that's the time. God, thank you. I know this right here is not working, but God, thank you. I thank you for working it out. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Something changes in you when you can praise God in the midst of the storm. Amen. Your perspective changes. I thought about my lenses. I have new lenses. They're progressive lenses. And I looked it up. They're not just like bifocals. They make me worse. They like multifocal. Anybody got progressive lenses? I don't want to call you out. You know, but, but they help you see up close. You know, for reading. They help you see in the middle. And they help you see far away as well. Amen. So I don't have to change lenses. Amen. So something happens with the word of God. Amen. The word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Amen. So when we hear the word and we live the word and we apply the word, it's like a lamp that will guide us in the midst of our storms. Amen. So when we say thank you, Jesus, and we give him praise in the midst of going through, it changes our perspective. It changes how we see things. I know it's still not working out. It don't look like it's working out, but I know, God, you have a purpose for this. And when I know God has a purpose, I can still be grateful in the midst of the storm, amen? I'm not the preacher today. So we just gonna bring Sister Ayana, come on, come on. <laughs> we gonna bring Sister Ayana to come and give the welcome and hugs of love, amen? amen? Praise God. Uh, I don't know what kind of week you guys have had, but I'm grateful. You know, I don't know what trials you face this week, but I'm, I'm grateful. And I'm grateful for this house, and I'm grateful for all of you, and I'm grateful for this place of worship. I'm grateful for our overseer. Oh, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry. Oh, so, on behalf of our overseer, Pastor Shannon, our associate pastors, um, I'd like to welcome our online family, all of you here today, to New and Living Way. Um, and it's time for hugs of love.
Praise the Lord. Thank you. 
Praise God. All right, so now we're going to call Hamneo. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So let's worship the Lord together. Amen. Amen.
how good he's been to you. You just start thinking about how great he has been, how great he is in your life. And it's not hard to just really get to that place and we say, thank you, Lord, we become so grateful and understand that we have more than we need. We have more than enough. And Lord God, we bless you right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just get that thing in your head. And just keep thinking of it. Lord God, you look back over your life. And you think and you think and you think and you think how great he is. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Lord God, we bless you right now. Because you are great. Lord God, you are great. And we adore you, Lord God. How great is our God. Hallelujah. How great is our God. Sing me how great. And all the sea, how great. How great is our God. Hallelujah.
you, Lord God, to adore you, to lift your name.
to come and I'll be found forever. I don't know about you. I'll agree you, but I'll be found forever worshiping him. Amen. And for that, I give God praise. Amen. We honor the Lord today for his presence with us and for each and every one of you here in the house of God. Look at somebody just tell them, it's good to see you. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. Amen. Amen. If you would turn in your Bible to the book of John, the Gospel of John. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Feel as they say, some type of way about the message today. Because I believe that in some ways the Lord is beating me publicly. Lord have mercy. But I'm grateful for knowing that when the Lord is correcting us. It is not because he delights in correcting us, but rather because he loves us. Amen. So when we feel the chastening of the Lord, amen, rather than being mad that he's chastening us, we ought to be grateful that that means that we are his sons and his daughters. Amen. 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 John chapter 5. As our children are ready, it's a lot of y'all back there. Amen. Amen. Our children are dismissed for children's ministry. Amen. We thank God for you all. Yes. Multiply. Be fruitful, saints. Amen. Amen. PJ's not about it. Amen. I'm mindful that we are only in the 12th day of the new year. Amen. Some of us have set goals that we have forgotten about already. <laughs> Some of us put stuff off till after the holidays. And we have found ways to tag on to the holiday well, after Christmas, after New Year, after Epiphany. Well, you know, January is still a holiday. Well, you know, then there's Valentine's Day. And before we know it, we all the way up to Resurrection Sunday and we still fat. Amen. <laughs> but I wanna I wanna provide some help for us. Notice I ain't say help for y'all, some help for us today. Amen. So y'all, but y'all, if I just break out crying in the middle of the message, I already done warned you that God is publicly flogging me today. John chapter 5, beginning at verse 1, the word of the Lord reads, Afterward, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish holy days. Inside the city near the sheep gate was the pool of Bethesda, with five covered porches, crowds of sick people, blind lame, or paralyzed, lay on the porches. And one of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. And when Jesus saw him and knew he had been ill for a long time, he asked him, would you like to get well? I can't, sir, the sick man said, for I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles up. Come on. Someone else always gets there ahead of me. And Jesus told him, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. Instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up his sleeping mat and began walking. But this miracle happened on the Sabbath. I know we've heard this scripture, we've read this scripture, I've preached this scripture, but I want to preach it from a, very, a slightly different perspective today. I want to preach it from the topic, Step Over Song. Step over some. 
So, Father, we thank you now and we praise you that you chasten those whom you love and scourge of every son. Thank you that your word comes to free us. Thank you, Lord, that your word comes to give us insight into what we need to see and the power to do it. Now, God, as I stand before your people, I pray for strength. I pray for clarity. I pray for power. I pray that your name be glorified and these who you love be edified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You have your seat. We're just coming off, many of us, a, a holiday break and are trying to perhaps reestablish our rhythms after some had a couple of weeks off of eating things you don't normally eat and doing things you don't normally do and staying up later than you would normally stay up for some of us. I know some of us go to bed at the same time regardless of what's going on in the world. God bless you. I have a question. How many of us have ever had that experience of perhaps laying in your bed or in your living room or, you know, somewhere in your comfy chair and you know that it is time for you to go to bed? Like, you know it's time for you to go to bed. But maybe you're streaming something and you're in the series and you just want to watch one more episode. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like, I really, I just, just, it just got good. I just want one more episode. Or, or, or maybe you, you, you have your laptop and you're at home and, and you know you really should shut it down for the day, but you're just like, I just want to respond to these last couple of emails. Anybody know what I'm talking about? These last, I know I shouldn't get them used to me responding to emails all time tonight, but if I get these last few done tonight, I can start off tomorrow fresh. Just a couple more emails. Or, or, or maybe, you you know, you, your home and your house is not where you want it to be, and you're like, I'm just going to do this last couple of loads of laundry, and then I'm going to go to sleep. I'm going, anybody understand what I'm talking about? So it's time for you to go to bed. But you're finding one more thing to do before you get there. And then you finally get there, you wake up in the morning, move through your day, groggy, cranky, caffeinated, sugar dependent. <laughs> or maybe just not as functional as you could have been because you said yes to the wrong thing. Lord, how many times have we said yes to the wrong thing? Not yes to a horrible thing, not yes to an ungodly thing, not, not yes to a demonic thing, just yes to the wrong thing at the wrong time. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Every yes contains an embedded no. Mm -hmm. See that? That's good. Every yes contains an embedded no. In other words, everything in your life and mine that we say yes to automatically means that we say no to something else. So when I say yes to one more episode, I'm not only saying no to sleep, I'm saying no to all the benefits that come along with sleep. When I say yes to one more episode, I'm saying no to improve memory. When I say yes to one more episode, I'm saying no to creativity. I'm saying no to sharpened sharpen attention. I'm saying no to better athletic performance. I'm saying no to being at a healthy, healthier weight. Because everything that we say yes to, we are also, whether we are aware of it or not, saying everything we say yes to, we're saying no to something else. We understand this better when it comes to money. 
Anybody understand it better than the council? Cousin, can I get $50? Now, if I give you $50, that's $50 that I'm not going to be able to have over here to do. It, it's a little bit clearer, right, when it, when it comes to money. But what I want to get us to understand today is that we have to come to the place where we begin to investigate the true cause of what we're saying yes to. What does it cost you for real? I was talking with someone yesterday, and they were asking me about uh, my willingness to substitute their class. They teach graduate school, and they're going to miss a class, and they were asking me about um, would I substitute their class. And he said, what's your rate? I said, well, this is my training rate. They're like, wow. I was like, yeah. That's my rate. Because it's not just me showing up and saying something in the class. You got to pay me there for that time. You got to pay me for my time driving there. And you got to pay me for all the stuff I need to read, study, and prepare before I get there. So if the only thing I consider is that the class is three hours and my rate is such and such an hour, so this is what it costs, guess what? I robbed myself. Because the true cause of me being there is not that, number one, I have to prepare to be there, I have to get there, and how about this? There's someplace else that I can't be because I gotta be there. I wanna encourage us this year to think about and to investigate the true cause of what we are saying yes to. Because many times we say yes to something because in the moment we see what the benefit is, but we haven't taken time to investigate what the cost is. How many of us would buy a car that's a dream, your dream car, and the note is only $200 a month, but on top of the $200 a month for the note, there's $2,000 every other month in maintenance? No, I'm good. I'm a just, I'm a just. Some of us are like, yeah, I got into that situation. I bought the car based on the note, but I didn't realize that it required a certain kind of oil and a certain kind of this and a certain kind of that. And so then we ended up in a problem because we didn't understand somebody saying the true cause. I want to encourage you to investigate the true cause of what you are saying yes to. Look at the scripture. After Jesus returned to Jerusalem, why is Jesus returning to Jerusalem? For one of the Jewish holy days. Why is Jesus returning to Jerusalem? For one of the Jewish holy days. Why is Jesus returning to Jerusalem? For one of the Jewish holy days. So Jesus is in Jerusalem for a purpose. Somebody say for a purpose. Somebody say I'm here for a purpose. Inside the city gate near the sheep gate, inside the city near the sheep gate was the pool of Bethesda with five covered porches. And listen to this. The scripture says that there are crowds of sick people. There are five porches and there are crowds of sick people. There are five porches and there are crowds of sick people, perhaps hundreds of sick people, all kinds of sicknesses, blindness, there's lameness, there are those who are paralyzed, and they are laid out on all of these porches. And look at how the scripture says it. Jesus is in, in the city, Jerusalem. For one of the holy days near the city on the way in, there are crowds, uh, there are five covered porches with crowds of sick people. And what does the scripture say? One of the men lying there. Everybody put up one finger. Just, just one. There are crowds. And Jesus' concern is just one. There are crowds. And Jesus' concern is just one. There are crowds. And Je I need somebody to get it. Jesus' concern is. Can I tell the story first from the Shannon Mason perspective? Y'all know me. I'm at home. I can be comfortable. The Shannon Mason way of doing this is that even though I realize I'm in Jerusalem for the festival, when I see the crowds of sick people, my heart breaks because I know that I have within me the power to help the crowds of sick people. And so I start walking towards the porch and I stop and say, oh my goodness, how are you? How long have you been here? What's going on with you? Where are you from? What's your mama name? 
I think I might have went to school with her. What kind of insurance do you have? Did you call them and see if there's anything they could do for you? What did they say when you call? Let me give you a contact and you can call back and here's my number so you can call. Then on to the next. What does the scripture say? There are crowds of sick people, but Jesus goes to one man. I need you to catch it. There are crowds of sick people, but Jesus goes to one man. There are crowds of sick people, but Jesus goes to one man. What does that mean? That means that in order to stay focused on why Jesus is there, he has to step over some. He literally has to say, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Oh, that looks like a bad situation. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Ooh, that's kind of rough. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. And come, somebody say to one man. One man. To one man. To one man. And in order to get to that one man, he can't be distracted by every other man that stands between him and that one man. Okay, let me put it in your context. Some of us have career goals, and some of us have, let, let, me, let, me, let, let, let me break it down. Some of us have career goals, but we have these things we want to do, yet everything that somebody offers us, we say, we say yes to. We want to build our business, but we say yes to every little thing. Listen, you got a multi-million dollar idea inside of you, and you keep saying yes to things that offer you $7 an hour. That's good. If we are ever going to get our get into all that God has put into us, we have got to learn how to step over some. I'm not going to ask anybody to raise hands because I know some of us in here got 511 part time. I do this and I do that and I do this and I do that. And come on, let me just expose it. Some of us can't step over anything because we don't feel that we're worthwhile. Right. We say yes to everything because we are so honored that somebody even asked us. So every opportunity, we say yes. Every time they say, can you come? We say yes. Every time they say, oh, somebody is really hurting, and I know that you know you can really speak to them, we give them our phone number. Everything, we, we step over nothing and wonder why we're not getting anywhere. Right. And this year, one of the things that I know I'm going to have to practice, and I encourage you to join in with me, is to step over some. walks through crowds of people to get to one man. And listen, when he gets to that one man, he continues to step over. He says to him, would you like to get well? So the first thing he steps over is every opportunity. Because there are a lot of opportunities between him and that one man. He steps over every opportunity to get to the opportunity. Mm, that's good. Did you catch it? And some of us wonder why we're tired and we're not progressing. Because you're not stepping over. You're taking every opportunity and it's keeping you from the opportunity. Jesus steps over the, 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 the uh, opportunities in order to get to the opportunity. But then when he gets to the man, he continues stepping over. Because he says to the man, would you like to be well? What does that mean? Jesus is stepping over over responsibility. Mm, that's good. First of all, let me find out whether you want to be different. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at you, and I see what the problem is, and I have it in my power to help you, but I have learned not to work for people who have not hired me. That's good. Some of y'all never heard that because you don't read my book, but it's okay. I have learned not to work for people. Listen, sometimes we're working for people who are not even working for themselves. Yeah. So not only do I have to step over opportunities that are not the opportunity, when I get to the opportunity, I have to step over, over responsibility. Yeah. Come on, if you're trying to help somebody, you're working harder than they're working. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. 
It might be, it might be time to step over some more. Lord. He asked the man, what is it that you want? I know people talk a lot about protecting my energy and I'm matching people's energy. The, the energy and the universe. I'm trying to understand why saints out here talking about the universe. Why in the right. world do you want the universe to help you when the one that created the universe? Right. Please speak on it. You go ahead on with your universe. I'm going to go ahead on with Jesus, okay? That's, that's where I'm going. With the one who spoke all that is into existence. Right. But you know, people ask this energy and these vibrations and all this stuff. But the truth of the matter is, there are some things that you need to protect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are some things, there are some pearls that we, that I, have scattered before swine. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. You put them out before people who didn't even have the ability to recognize or appreciate what you were giving them. And then when you were in front of somebody who had the ability to recognize and appreciate what you were giving them, you ain't have nothing left. We have got to get to the place where we are, listen, it's not about being prideful, it's not about being bougie, it's about being a good steward. I only got seven of pearls. Show me you worthy. Nah, you ain't talking right. I only, I, listen, if I, if I only got seven, if you realize that you only have the same, you have the same 24 hours that everybody else has. You have the same 24 hours.